Well, I'm going to start off this video about public education with two students that were in my Georgia history class. These guys got to go on a field trip with us to Stone Mountain, which is a public education venue here in Georgia. Mark, what did you learn most, or what was the most important thing about going to Stone Mountain? I learned about the generals on the side of the mountain and the president. Okay, so you learned about Georgia's rich history. Mm -hmm. Jake, what about you? What was... What was neat about going to an actual monument in Georgia? Well, like, I always read about it in textbooks, but, like, actually going there really, like, opened it up for me. Like, I really understood what Stone Mountain really was. Okay. So as you're reading about it in textbooks. Okay, cool. So you were able to actually see and kind of imagine the history better by actually going to the place. Yeah. Okay, cool. Is there anything else that you guys enjoyed about the field trip? Were you able to learn more about maybe the Civil War? Yeah, we learned a lot more about the Civil War. Okay, so what would y'all say about field trips in the future? Would you guys want to go on more field trips to places like this? Yeah. Yeah, I would love it. You think it made your learning um, better or enhanced it in any mm -hmm. way? Mm -hmm. It helped me learn a lot more. Okay. Well, thank you guys for uh, being a part of this video and this interview. Um, these guys are my star students <laughs> in my Georgia history class. Uh, so I just want to thank them. This was Mark Reed, and this was his brother, Jake Reed. So, thank you. I wanted to start out this video uh, with a first-person account of what public education uh, really means to students. Um, you know, interviewing these two students, I had them in Georgia history class, uh, they, they really enjoyed visiting these places. Um, and going to Stone Mountain, we did like a reenactment, um, a pre-Civil War, the antebellum era, and they enjoyed being able to handle actual artifacts, uh, how they live life. Just, just basic, um, you know, life and culture during that time, and they were able to first, you know, firsthand experience these things. And so I chose to interview them because I think it just sets up a, a good theme of why public education, uh, even for adults, is very good to experience. Um, so I chose to do the Old North Church as part of uh, my research. Uh, the Old North Church was built in 17. 23, and it's called the Christ Church in the city of Boston, but it's also known as the Old North Church. Uh, the church is the oldest standing church in Boston, but is actually an active Episcopalian congregation. Uh, the Old North, North Church would play a vital role in Paul Revere's famous ride, uh, which we'll talk about later. Uh, in 1775, the British would advance its forces towards Lexington and Concord, and this church would play a pivotal role in this. Uh, the location of this church um, is 193 Salem Street. And you can see here it's located uh, just nice right here by the, uh, the port there. So it was able to see uh, almost like a panoramic view of the city. It was able to see, uh, as you can see there, um, around the waterways if the British were advancing. So Paul Revere... Uh, was very smart in strategy and knew that this church would be pivotal as far as a location uh, to use to signal if the enemy was advancing. Um, as you can see here, this is the Old North Church in Boston, a uh, statue of Paul Revere and his famous ride. Uh, the Old North Church not only serves as a public monument, uh, like I said before, but an active church but is a symbol of the revolution. Uh, the church would serve as a crucial point, a crucial role in the Lexington Concord battle. Uh, as Paul Revere would make his famous ride to tell everyone uh, the British are coming, he would tell Robert Newman how to signal the advancement of the British tro troops towards Lexington and Concord. Uh, this church would go down in history as the initial signal for the Patriot troops uh, that the British are advancing toward uh, Lexington and Concord. Now, according to many scholars, two men would have uh, had access to the lighting of the two lanterns to alert the troops. Um, in Longfellow's poem, Paul Revere's Ride, uh, it would make the church a landmark of the Revolutionary War. Uh, it would pretty much be the signal that the revolution has started. Uh, in his famous phrase, one if by land, two if by sea, um, this just goes to show you how poems can immortalize um, uh, a, a symbol of a certain movement or a revolution in history. Um, now, according to the Boston Freedom Trail, there are two men who have given credit uh, over the years. Uh, Robert Newman, uh, who was the sexton of the church, and Captain John Pooling Jr., 
who was a member of the church vestry, uh, and they were both part of the Sons of Liberty. Both would have had access to the church, and both were patriots. Uh, many still debate on who actually hung the lanterns in the steeple, uh, but the action itself is legendary. Uh, the lanterns are signal, signals that the Sons of Liberty are alerting the militia for Paul Revere uh, and his plan that he created a week before this extraordinary event. Many of the events that took uh, place on Boston's Freedom Trail would be etched into U.S. history as a beginning to a revolutionary movement that would not go quietly. Now here you have uh, an artist's illustration of the two lanterns in the steeple of the church. You have Paul Revere um, from the famous poem of, of Longfellow, who's taking his famous ride, uh, signaling everybody that the, uh, the British are coming. Uh, again, these are great images uh, to use, and they're powerful as far as telling history. Uh, but for field trip use, uh, it is great to actually go to these places uh, to to really to really experience uh, firsthand, um, you know, what the facility looks like. To explore inside, uh, to see the church, to actually go upstairs to the steeple to see how, uh, you know, uh, how high the steeple was. Um, I think it, it gives a tangible experience to a, a beautifully told tale uh, that's been etched in, in our history. Uh, again, it wasn't just the lighting of the two torches to signal an advancing event, but it was also the signaling that the colonists are now in a rebellion against the British, uh, which I think is, is crucial because they're now seen as traitors to the crown. Uh, and this is a crucial point when, if I'm teaching students, I would want to really put that emotion into it. And what better way to to put emotion uh, into a a lesson or to an idea or theme, but then to actually visit the church. I think that is just uh, an, an awesome way to do it. And again, here's inside uh, the church. You've got monuments here uh, that the students are able to walk in and see this beautifully uh, restored church. Uh, and they can actually, you know, get all the senses of it. They can see, they can smell, they can touch, uh, they can hear how rickety and how wooden. And just, you know, it took bravery. It wasn't just lighting uh, lanterns and putting them up in the steeple, but it, it added uh, a, a nice legendary um, uh, icon to the story. And so I, I really uh, am passionate about taking field trips and so I hope you enjoyed my video. Uh, this is just a little research I did on the North Church, the Old North Church. And so uh, thank you guys for taking your time. Uh, again, my name is Josh Kirby, and uh, I'm excited about this class.